In Acts chapter 12, verse number 1, and uh, we'll just read through about verse number 7 or 8 to get the thought for the uh, message today. The Bible said in Acts 12, verse number 1, Now about that time Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church, and he killed James, uh, of the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further, uh, to take Peter also, then were the days uh, of unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison um, and delivered him to four quarter loins of, of soldiers uh, uh, to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth uh, uh, to the people. Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer uh, uh, was made without ceasing of the church unto uh, God for him. And uh, when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping uh, uh, between two soldiers, bowed with two chains, uh, and the uh, keepers before the door kept the prison. Uh, and behold, the angel of the Lord came unto him, uh, or uh, upon him, and the Bible said, uh, a light shined in the prison, uh, and he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, uh, Arise up quickly, uh, and his chains, fell off his hands uh, and the angel said unto him gird thyself uh, and bind on thy sandals and so he did uh, and he said unto him cast thy garment uh, about thee and follow me and let's pray our father uh, in the precious and lovely name of the Lord Jesus we bow uh, uh, one more time this side of eternity to thank you for the, uh, the good day that you blessed us we thank you for this uh, our Lord's day and thank you Father for the opportunity to be uh, in the house of the living God I thank you for the uh, good word of God we've already heard this morning and I thank you Father for the old songs of Zion uh, uh, that we sung and thank you Lord uh, uh, that I know the truth of what they sung about this morning uh, I'm so thankful dear Father for the love of God uh, and that blessed assurance we have uh, in our Lord Jesus Christ bless the preacher Preaching uh, of the good word of God this morning. May preaching come easy. Uh, I pray, dear God, the sweet Holy Ghost uh, uh, breathe upon us today. God, that you'll help your servant. Uh, help me that I might help these, your people. Uh, I pray, dear God, you'll send a great revival. Uh, uh, let it begin in our hearts and our lives this morning. Uh, I pray for every home that's represented. Uh, uh, Lord, touch every family. Uh, I pray for these young people. Touch them this morning. Morning, I, I Lord, breathe upon them, use them for your glory. I, I pray most of all now, save that so that may be here lost and undone without Jesus. I pray, oh God, I, I, you'll draw them by your power. We'll thank you, Father, I, and we'll love you and praise you and give you the glory. I, in Jesus' precious name, amen. I, and amen, you may be seated. I, I appreciate you standing for the reading I, of the Word of God. I want to pray on the thought this morning about peace. I'm thankful for the wonderful peace of God. I'm glad today in this troubled world you can have peace in your heart. I think one of the most precious passages in all of God's Word is right here before us when it comes to explaining what peace is. I believe that Peter had the peace of God. Could you imagine it in this passage? Let me just say by way of introduction. Uh, this is the last time we'll find Peter mentioned uh, in the book of Acts. Uh, we know that from chapters 1 through 12 uh, uh, Peter was the main preacher uh, and the focus was upon his ministry. Uh, uh, but in this passage Peter will fade off the scene uh, and in chapter 13 begins uh, uh, that ministry of the great apostle Paul. Uh, uh, but we find here a wonderful story about Peter uh, and how God gave him peace in his heart uh, uh, we find that Herod uh, who was a wicked man uh, he killed James with a sword uh, and because he saw it pleased the people uh, he was going to kill Peter also uh, and they cast him in prison uh, I couldn't imagine what it must have been like uh, I don't know if they took that sword uh, and chopped off James's head uh, or if they took it and just stuck it in his gut uh, and pulled that two edged sword out uh, and 
and the chains fell over dead. Uh, but I imagine this, it had to be a horrible, uh, a violent death. Uh, I believe probably Peter witnessed his uh, uh, dear friend and brother in Christ uh, uh, being executed for the cause of Christ. Uh, and Herod, and he had the authority to do it, uh, uh, looked at Peter and said, after Easter, uh, I'm going to kill you too. Uh, uh, but dear friend, that night, uh, and they take old Peter, cast him in prison. Uh, and you know what Peter does? Uh, he kicks his sandals off. Uh, he takes his coat off. Uh, they chain him between two Roman soldiers. Uh, uh, but dear friend, you know what he does? Uh, he just lays his head over uh, on the shoulder of that soldier uh, and begins to go to sleep. Uh, I believe probably he might even saw some logs. Uh, if you know what that means, he probably did some snoring. Uh, uh, but you know what he had? Uh, he had the wonderful peace of God uh, in his heart. Uh, uh, what if you knew tomorrow uh, uh, you were going to be executed by sword? Uh, it would be a violent death. Uh, uh, could you go home and go to sleep uh, and not worry one, uh, one ounce about that? Uh, uh, but you'd have the wonderful peace of God uh, in your heart. Uh, I saw a picture one time and, and I like to go see uh, waterfalls and rivers uh, uh, but I really don't like being around uh, a real powerful rushing water. Uh, uh, once several years ago me and the wife uh, uh, took a trip up to uh, Buffalo, New York and we saw uh, uh, we saw Niagara Falls uh, and uh, they I forget how many millions of gallons of water falls per second uh, and, uh, and it was amazing to stand there uh, and I'm sure you've been there we went down that was our first time uh, and they had, you could go down and go behind uh, uh, where the waterfall was and it was so violent and so loud uh, and my wife standing next to me and I couldn't even hear her talking uh, uh, because it was so uh, uh, violent and loud uh, but I saw a painting of a waterfall uh, and it showed all that white water going over the cliffs uh, and it showed a tree limb the artist painted a tree limb uh, and going over that fall as the water came over and a bird had built a nest uh, and that bird had built that nest right there over all that violent water and all of that rushing all of that danger and that little old sparrow uh, I was sitting on that nest uh, and had her eyes closed uh, and I thought the Holy Ghost uh, uh, spoke to my heart and I thought uh, oh, what wonderful peace uh, in the midst of the storms uh, I'm glad God can give you peace uh, he can give you wonderful peace uh, you can have peace that passeth all understanding uh, I'm telling you couldn't even put in words uh, uh, the wonderful peace of God uh, uh, that's in your heart uh, I'm glad there's divine peace uh, uh, Jesus said peace I leave with you uh, uh, my peace I give unto you uh, uh, my if the world give it give I unto you let not your heart be troubled uh, uh, neither let it be afraid uh, Isaiah 26 verse 3 talks about a uh, uh, perfect peace uh, uh, thou wilt keep him in perfect peace uh, whose mind is stayed upon thee uh, uh, Psalm 119 uh, and verse 165 said great peace uh, how they that love thy law uh, and nothing shall offend them uh, I'm glad the Bible talks about uh, uh, the peace of God. Uh, you can have the peace of God. Uh, and you know where you find the peace of God? Uh, you find it with a God of peace. Uh, I'm glad, hey, when you know Him, uh, He is the Prince of Peace. Uh, and when you met Him, I'm glad, uh, hey, He'll give you peace. Uh, you can have peace concerning your sin. Uh, uh, you can have peace concerning your eternity. Uh, I can remember before God saved me uh, as a young boy, uh, afraid to go to sleep at night uh, I'd pull the covers on my head sometime, uh, I was afraid I was going to die and go to hell uh, uh, but I'm so thankful since that glorious night uh, on a Friday night uh, in an old fashioned revival meeting, uh, I'm glad thank God hey, uh, I was gloriously born again uh, and the peace of God came in my heart uh, and I'm glad that I know that I know uh, I'm saved by the wonderful grace of God Hey, God can give you peace. Amen. How did Peter have such peace? First of all, he was sure. And brother, the Sunday school teacher, he had some understanding about some things that God had done in his life. 
First of all, he was sure of his relationship with the Lord Jesus. In John chapter number 1, you'll find where Andrew, Simon's Peter's brother, Andrew had met the Lord. And the first thing he did, he went and got Peter and he brought him to Jesus. And that's when Peter was gloriously born again. He had met the Lord Jesus Christ as his personal Savior. And I'm telling you, when you get saved, God does something wonderful in your heart. And the first thing that you want for God to do is save your family. I remember as a kid, God saved me when I was 10 years old. And I was saved in a revival meeting. I'll tell this and move on. Don't get bogged down here, but I want to give him a testimony. My daddy was a preacher. I was taken to church all my life. It's all I ever knew. But for the first time in a revival meeting, the Holy Ghost of God got a hold of my heart and showed me I was a sinner. I remember going home every night God dealing with my heart. And I remember on Thursday night, in that service, God had dealt with my heart. It seemed like that preacher. But he was preaching right direct to me. At least I thought he was. I tell you what he was. It's the Holy Ghost singled me out. But I knew I was lost, and I was going to die and go to hell. And I could have got saved every night in that meeting if, if I just went forward, but I just I postponed, I postponed, I postponed. I got two brothers and two sisters. Two sisters older than me, and I was the middle child, two brothers younger than me. If you don't think it's miserable to live in a home, you got two sisters older than you are, you don't know what miserable is when you got two sisters think they're the boss. And they're always trying to tell you what to do. But that little country house I grew up in had the living room on one side. My two sisters had their bedroom on one side. Us three boys we had three little twin beds. I was on the far wall. My youngest brother Daryl in the middle and Mark was over on the other wall. And after church that night, like kids get in the mischief, we got into a pillow fight and should have been asleep. Man, my daddy back then, buddy, we got whoopings. Hey, man, hey, they hadn't invented time out yet. I told my daddy one time when I got older, I said, Daddy, you know there's times I got a whooping and I didn't do it. Well, my daddy said, well, son, how many times you do something to get away with it? I said, a bunch. He said, well, we're even then. I said, hey, look at it. Buddy, we was having ourselves a knockdown, drag out pillow fight. And I could hear my daddy's footsteps coming down the hall. And we all jumped in the bed, cut the lights out, jumped in the bed, pulled the covers up while we was asleep. Then threw my daddy in one bed. He come away and got me, I guess because I was the oldest boy. Gave me a whooping. Then over there and got Mark, he was the next oldest, and gave him a whooping. Then he got over there to Daryl in the middle. In those days, Daryl was skinny. Skinny. He was so skinny, brother. He didn't have but one stripe in his PJs. That's how skinny he was. <laughs> I mean, he had to run around in the shower to get wet. And I tell you, even before, I guess to try to try to have daddy get daddy to have a compassion on him, before he ever got a got a belt laid on him, he was screaming bloody murder. And there's old skinny neck, them jugger veins is about that big around. My daddy had a hold of his wrist and he was trying to run and get away. I could see my daddy now chasing him and whooping my brother. And I tell you what the Holy Ghost was doing. I was miserable that week. And the Holy Ghost of God spoke to my heart and said, If you die and go to hell, you are burning hell. And if your brothers die and go to hell, they'll scream from the flames of hell I, I, for all eternity. I could have got saved that night if I'd have just uh, repented of my sin as Jesus. But I said, Lord, if you'll let me live, I'll get saved tomorrow night. And that night, Friday night, that preacher preached. My daddy believed in putting us up front as kids. 
And that week, I had been helping with leading the singing. When the preacher would get done preaching, he'd point at me and say, Son, would you come and lead us in a verse of invitation? And that night when the preacher pointed to me, I said, Preacher, I can't say tonight I'm lost. I'm going to die and go to hell. And I believe this with all of my heart because the Bible said it's with the heart that man believeth unto righteousness. I believe before ever his head altar, uh, God had saved uh, uh, me. My life changed on the way to an old-fashioned altar uh, uh, because my heart was cried out to Jesus. Uh, uh, God be merciful to me, a sinner. Uh, and that night God saved my life. Uh, and God changed my heart that night. God made a new creature out of me. I don't know how to explain it but built in that altar that night as a 10 year old boy God called me to preach and I didn't know what to do but I know that night in that altar knelt there in that altar I felt the call of God in my heart to preach his word I can remember going to my daddy's study and getting one of his Bibles. And he had some books, and I got introduced to a man by the name of Oliver B. Green. And I can remember getting some Oliver B. Green books and getting one of my daddy's study Bibles and going to the barn and getting in the stall of that barn and opening up that Bible and them books as a young boy and studying God's Word and the Holy Ghost of God uh, uh, speaking to my heart. Uh, I'm here to tell you, friend, you can know uh, uh, this thing is real uh, and God can give you that peace in your heart that you know the Lord Jesus. And Peter had a real relationship with Jesus Christ. He had got saved. The Bible said, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ and because of Calvary and because of the precious blood and because of an empty tomb, you can have victory in your heart and have peace in your heart and in your soul and you can nail her down that you know that you're saved by the grace of God. Peter knew he was sure of his relationship with Jesus Christ. Did you know if you're lost, you have no peace? The Bible said, He that believeth not is condemned already. There's a dark cloud of condemnation that is hovering over you. And if you die in your sin, you'll die and go to hell. And I'm telling you, friend, the wrath of God, the Bible said, abideth upon a man that's lost and does not know the Lord. And when he dies, he'll lift his eyes in hell. Friend, the sentence has already been passed. You're condemned, you're a sinner. And you'll die lost without the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no peace, saith my God, to the wicked. Unless you know the peace of God, the, the God of peace, you'll never have peace. Not only did Peter, he had that peace because he was sure. and He knew of his relationship with Christ. But he was also sure and knew the reality of death. Peter in 2 Peter chapter number 1 in verse Number 15, he said, Moreover, I will endeavor that ye may be able after my decease to have these things always in remembrance. Peter referred to his death as a decease. You know what that word means? It means an exodus or a departing or a leaving. Peter knew if he died, Jesus said, don't you fear them that can destroy your body. And after that, they can do nothing. You fear him that after he's killed your body, he can cast your soul in hell. And Peter had the assurance in his heart. Uh, he knew when he died, uh, he was going home to be with Jesus. Uh, uh, so he did not fear death. Uh, oh, death, where is thy sting? Uh, oh, death, where is thy victory? Uh, I'm glad we have victory in Jesus. Uh, I don't have to fear death. Uh, I'm telling you, friend, it's just good night down here. Uh, 
and good morning over there. Uh, that's what death is for a child of God. Death is an exodus. That same word, that word decease, is the New Testament word that's equivalent to that book in the Bible, the second book called Exodus. It means the way out. God sent Moses down to Egypt to get God's people and bring them out of bondage. And I'll tell you, the Bible said for a Christian to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Paul said for me to live is Christ, but to die is gain. Hey, we don't have to fear death. You may not want to go on the next boatload, but I tell you what, when your time comes to go, I'm glad you can know that you're ready and you're prepared to meet God and you can have the wonderful peace of God and you can know that you're ready to meet the Lord. Oh, I'm telling you, do you know? Do you know? Peter, did you know when Rachel died, Jacob's beloved wife, whom he loved, worked 14 years for her. When she gave birth to Benjamin, Benoni is what she named him, and Jacob named him Benjamin. The Bible said that her soul, that Rachel, when she died, her soul was in departing. And then God put in parentheses. Anytime you find something in the Word of God that's in parentheses, it's an afterthought. Or God is explaining to you what He just said. And the Bible said her soul was in departing, parentheses, for she died. Her soul was departing her body. She died. I'll tell you, you have a soul. Man is three parts. Made in the image of God who is Father, Son, Holy Ghost, the triune Godhead. And your three parts, body, soul, spirit. Sometimes the scripture will refer to the spirit and soul as being one because though they are defined as separate, they're inseparable. When you die, your soul will leave your body. If you're saved, you're going to heaven. If you're lost, you're going to hell. Don't you believe the lie of the devil that after death there is nothing and, and when you die you're in a state of nothingness and, and you are and there's a that, that, that you're just being so sleep. Uh, uh, that's a lie straight out of hell. Uh, uh, there is no such thing as so sleep uh, and there is no such thing as purgatory. It's heaven or hell uh, and God gives you this opportunity to be saved today. That's what the Bible said today is the day of salvation. Your soul, you ever had fear? You ever had fear? An emotion called fear? Where do you feel it? Right down here. You have a muscle called a heart. That ain't what the Bible calls your heart. Your heart is your soul, your innermost being. It is the seat of emotion. If you have fear, you feel it from deep down within you. One Hebrew written that word is bowels. From deep down in your gut. You have joy. If you get so overwhelmed with joy. Mary when she was told by the angel she'd give birth to the Lord Jesus and then the angel said that Elizabeth is going to give birth huh, to the forerunner in six months with her. She heard that news. She said, My soul doth magnify the Lord. You feel joy. The Spirit has to do with your intellect. You know how you perceive and know things? It's right up here. 
That's why there's the teaching. You know the devil can get up here in your head. He can't get in your soul. If you're saved, he can't live in your soul. But buddy, he can get in your head and put some thoughts that ain't right. And he can cause you to doubt sometimes. But I'm glad if Jesus is in your soul, how you're saved by the wonderful grace of God. He lives in your heart. He's in your soul. Death is an exodus. It's also an exchange. You know what Peter also mentioned? Not only did he use in 2 Peter chapter 1 the word deceased concerning his death, Peter reminded them before he died. He said, I want to put you to remembrance of these things. He says, I was in that holy mount. I saw his majesty. You know what he's talking about? When Jesus was transfigured before them. And they got a glimpse of the glory of Christ. His face shone above the brightness of the noonday sun. Yeah. Oh, Peter said, hey, you can't threaten me with death. I, he said, I've done death the one I, I, that has the keys of death and of hell. I, and if I die, I know there's a better day coming. I, I, there's something a whole lot more wonderful this world has to offer. I, I'm glad this world is not my home. I, I'm just a passing through. I, I, my treasures are laid up I, I, somewhere beyond the blue, thank God. Glad that heaven's my home. I'm going to be like him. You know what? The preacher in Sunday school allured to this this morning about what we experience here. The Bible talks about the first fruits of the Spirit. The first fruits was when Israel gleaned the harvest. There was a feast of Jehovah called the Feast of First Fruits. It pictures the resurrection you know they went out in the fields chopped down their crops if it was wheat they'd take them individual stalks of wheat with a rich golden grain fruit at the top and they would tie it together in a bundle it's called a sheath and the priest they'd take it to the priest and the priest would take that, that bundle of wheat walk into the holy place before God one offering was called the heave offering. He just took it and held it up before God. Saying, thank you, Lord, for the harvest. One offering was called a wave offering. He'd take it and hold it up and just walk around the presence of God, just waving it around in the holy place. Praising God. That's why, that's why it's all right to lift your hands, wave toward heaven. I promise you, hey, somebody will be waving back at you. I believe that, hey, I got old-fashioned mom and daddy. I didn't love me enough to take me to the house of God, and I got saved. I, I just like to believe he's leaning over the portals of glory and hollering, preach, son, preach it. I thank God Almighty I, for those who know the Lord. It's a whole lot better than what I have down here. I remember my daddy saying, son, I got a whole lot more on the other side than I got down here. The older I get, the more I understand what he's talking about. Almost six years ago now, my daddy didn't like me to say this. I lost my precious mama. Homecoming Sunday, one of the hardest trials I've ever been through in my whole life. At the church where I pastored, homecoming Sunday, my mama fell at church. Hit her head and it killed her. Oh, I'm telling you, the darkest hour I've ever experienced in my life. For over 30 years, I've been preaching funerals and helping people. But for the first time, I realized what days are going through. I lost my mama. My daddy said, son, you didn't lose her. You can't lose something, you know where it's at. But i tell you what. A part of me died when my mama died. But I'm glad, thank God, Jesus lives in my heart. I may miss her more every day, but I'm glad I have that blessed hope. I, I'm looking for Jesus to come, I, and there will be a glad reunion day. And I'm going to see Mom and Daddy again. I, and i got precious grandparents on the other side. I, oh, what a hope we have. I, I take you not saved, you better get in. I, I, this world is, offers you no real hope and joy and peace. Peter had peace about death 
He had peace about his relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me just say this, now move on. Peace is our death is not only a it's an exchange and it's an exodus. It is an engagement. Amen. Anybody like to go to the dentist? I never heard anybody say, Whoopee, I'm going to the dentist today. Hallelujah. Y'all want to come along. I hate going so bad. I called counseled my appointment. There ain't but one thing I hate worse than dentist appointments is snakes. Amen. Pretty kind of snakes I, I hate. Live ones and dead ones and rubber ones. I shoot all three. Hey, Amen. If I tell you what, you have an appointment with death. You're going to keep it. Are you sure of your relationship with Christ? Are you sure of the reality of death? Do you know if you'll die and go to heaven or hell? Number three, Peter had peace because he was sure and knew of the reason why he is suffering. It was Peter that wrote that the trial of our faith being much more precious than gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise at the appearing of the Lord Jesus. Peter knew that God had a reason. Huh? He knew that all things work together for good to them who love the Lord. Huh? And Peter could have peace. Huh? He knew that God was doing something wonderful in his life. Storms are going to come. But God can give you peace. Oh, I'm telling you the wonderful peace of God. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my light, thou hast taught me to say, it is well. It is well with my soul. And then Peter also was sure he knew the results of prayer. I like Acts chapter 12, verse 5, where the church ceased not. You know, God answers prayer. Prayer still changes things. Prayer can still unlock the windows of heaven. Prayer can still meet your need. Hey, prayer can still send a revival. It may look like it. Hey, it may be the case that America's gone too far. But I know this. God said if this people pray, God can still hear from heaven. God can still work miracles. You know, things may not always go like we want it to go. But we trust in God. And we keep praying. I want you to turn to John chapter 21. And I'm done. John 21, verse 18 and 19. While you're turning, I want to read this verse. Tell you from 2 Peter, but you go to John 21. I know you know this. I want you to see it in Scripture. Peter says in 2 Peter 1, 14, knowing that shortly... I must put off this in my tabernacle even as our Lord Jesus Christ had shewed me. Do you know the Lord showed Peter how he is going to die? None of us know what tomorrow holds. To be honest with you, other than what that book tells me, and I thank God, but as far as my personal life, when and where and how I'm going to die, I don't know. And to be honest with you, I don't want to know. I just want to live for God today while I can make the best of it. You know what David said? David said, I'll praise you while I have my being. You know what you better do? You better praise God and live for God while you can, while you have the health and while you have a sound mind. There'll come a time you won't be able to. So while you can, you better make the best of every opportunity. Serve the Lord, give you all to God, and worship Him when you come to the house of God. It could be the last opportunity you'd have. But the Lord... Let Peter know how he's going to die. He lived with that. And as he wrote his last final epistle, he said, it ain't going to be long. I'm going to put off this tabernacle, this old robe of flesh, even as our Lord showed me. And here's what the Lord showed him in John chapter 21, verse 18 and 19. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, when thou wast young, thou girdest thyself, 
and walk this whither thou wouldest, but when thou shalt be old. Now I want to stop there. In Acts chapter 12, Peter's in the prime of his life. He's a fairly young man. And the Lord had done given him assurance. You're going to live to be an old man. I believe he went to sleep and said, Hey, Harry, you just don't know what I know. <laughs> and you just don't know. You know, what, you know what Peter was? He was sure he could rely on the promises of God. The Lord had already given him a promise. When you're old, Peter knew he hadn't got old. But then here's how the Lord, now the Lord gave him a promise, you're going to live to be an old man. But then the Lord said this, When thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee. In other words, have to help carry him, and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. Then notice the scripture, This spake he, signifying by what death he should glorify God. History says when they came to kill Peter, and they was going to take him and lay him on the cross, he declared, I am not worthy to die in the same manner like my Lord. And they crucified him upside down. But the Lord said, you're going to have to stretch forth your hands. Somebody's going to help carry you as an old man to a place you ain't going to want to go to. And the Lord signified by what death he'd die. He knew that Herod couldn't kill him with a sword. He knew that Herod couldn't kill him because he was still in the prime of his life. God had done signified how he would die. It may not have been a pleasant death, but I tell you at that moment in Acts chapter 12, Peter had the promise of God. He was relying upon the promise and the power of God and he could go to sleep with peace and have peace that passeth all understanding because he had the word of God on him. Hey, I'll make no bones about it. This Bible right here, the King James 1611, is the Word of God. I have no problem saying this is the inspired Word of God. I've been called narrow-minded. I said, I am. I'm about that narrow-minded right there. When it comes to narrow-mindedness concerning God's Word, I'm so narrow-minded I can look through a keyhole with both eyeballs how narrow-minded I am concerning this book. And I'll tell you, the Bible said, all the promises of God are in Him, yea, and in Him, amen. It's true. This is the true Word of God. And it'll take you to heaven if you'll trust it. I want to ask you this morning, do you know the Lord? The pastor's going to come. They're going to come have a song ready. I want to ask you, do you know the Lord? Are you saved? Do you, are you sure of that relationship that you know, that you know, that you know? I want to tell this and I'll be done. The preacher's going to come. First church I pastored. When I met my wife, I meant to mention her a while ago, I'm thankful for my wife, Sandra. The preacher asked me, she said, he said, is your wife coming? Twice, I think. Yeah. I said, yes, sir, she's coming. I don't, if, if I can I don't hardly go anywhere without my wife. I depend on her. Amen. She cuts the grass, cleans the fish, skins the deer. What would I do without her? No, I'm thankful for my wife. When I first met that woman, she's going to church. Her parents didn't even go. She had godly standards and convictions in her life. A holy woman. When I met her, buddy, she'd dress right and live right and walk right, and I thought, what a godly woman. I fell in love with her. We got married. Now, I'd already mentioned God called me to preach, but I didn't surrender until after me and her got married. I lived with that all them years as a teenager, knowing God called me to preach. But anyway, I took my first church. I was 21 years old. My wife, just a young bride still. Three months at that first church, the Holy Ghost laid upon my heart to have a tent revival. We had a tent meeting. 
Went into a second week. People being saved. Go, go there at the tent at 2 o'clock in the morning. People be on that tent praying. And the evangelist I had that week being outdoors, he preached that week. He got real hoarse because of the, the weather. And he said, Preacher, you're going to have to help me. So I started preaching. I'd preach one night. He'd preach one night. On Monday night, that second week of that revival, remember it well, I preached on the prodigal son and how people will go away from God. Had them old wood shavings in the floor. I get, preached, gave an invitation. I saw my wife coming down that altar, tears flowing down her face. I thought she was coming to pray for somebody to get saved. And I continued to give that invitation. My wife got up, walked on that platform, grabbed a hold of me. And in my ear, she was just a crying. She said, I got to get saved. I got to get saved. We knelt down and prayed again. And she got saved and she got testified that she went to the altar as a little girl, made this profession of faith, but didn't trust Jesus, went because other people went. And God had been dealing with her heart but she was afraid to say she was lost because now she was a preacher's wife and she's afraid she'd embarrass a, a, the, her husband and, and hurt the minister and she, she did not want to make that profession because of that reason. She said she'd wake up at night, reach over the bed and feel as if I was there. Or, uh, go look out the, in the daytime at our kids in the yard playing and see if they were still there. She was afraid the Lord comes. She'd be left behind. Now I'm not trying to get anybody to doubt their salvation. I'm telling you this today, being a church member won't get you to heaven. You still have to be born again, saved by the grace of God. Somebody ought to get it right this morning and get saved. Be ready when the time comes to make that crossing and know that heaven's your home. Father, I pray you'll bless this invitation. Say some old sinner, Lord, revive your church and we'll thank you for what you do. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.